Welcome back. This is Chris and my brother in Christ, Stephen. Hello. I mean, welcome. The date today is November 4th, Year of Our Savior, 2017. And the title of this video is Son of Perdition. Son of Perdition. And I know you're not going to find that in the NIV because it's not the Word of God. See, the Bible has a built-in dictionary. And that's why we know that 2 Thessalonians... 2 verse 3 and i believe it's john what 17 12 talks about son of perdition very important so we're continuing the saga of man of sin the son of perdition and we're not here to invent anything folks you want to learn about the history of protestantism or things like that would be like wiley good stuff you can download this book folks we need people understanding this because when you go to seminary most likely you're going to be taught and influenced by the jesuits by the papacy you're going to be given a, a, a virus of doubt, yeah, God said, and you're going to come out of seminary not believing in the preserved word of God. D most likely, if you go to the seminary, you have, path, you have pastors there that will kill. They're in the job of killing souls. They're in the job of, the purpose of all these lexicons and all this stuff is not to teach Greek, but to teach unbelief that's the purpose behind it whether you realize it or not I understand that Satan is a long-range planner that's what he is we've shifted from the whole world understanding and believing a history from geocentrism to a deception that's been being taught for 500 years and that's why I have this shift from geocentrism to heliocentrism a 500 year deception well I'll tell you what Satan altering God's word goes back even farther Satan has been trying to tamper with God's word even back to the Garden of Eden. That's why he told Eve, no, don't trust that second-hand document, specifically from your husband. He said it came from God. No, no, no. No, I'm going to tell you what. You know, me and my sister, Madame Blavatsky, uh, we need to go back to the originals, right? You know, Madame Blavatsky, she's like, don't trust that King James Bible. Don't trust that second-hand document. We need to go back to the... Roman Catholic Vulgate. We need to go back to the, the, um, the Septuagint, which goes back to Greek, then to Hebrew, but we wouldn't want to go directly back to Hebrew. Um, we need to go back to the originals, because that's the inspired Word of God, but not the King James Bible. You, Folks, a lot of times... You might actually get salvation there. <laughs> yeah, and they're not there to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, are they? I mean, it's 2017. Should have, Oh, no, we want to get involved in endless disputings and all these questions and strives. Wouldn't it be so easier just to say, Hey, man, I'm going to believe this. is going to be activated by faith and believe in it and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Preach that there's only one mediator. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one Christ, but we go, oh, no, no, no. We need Antichrist, right? Isn't that what we're talking about? Antichrist. And what does Antichrist mean? Well, it means you're anti and you're Christ and you're blatantly against Jesus. No, that's not what it means. Antichrist means replacement or vicar of Christ. Vicarious Christi in substitute of and that's exactly what the Bible confirms. That's what John was confirming and saying, well, there is the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, which is about, what, 45 AD or whatever. And now we have about 90 AD where John is still alive and he's helped, you know, bringing forth the, the final culmination of the New Testament. And he's talking about Antichrist, but there are many Antichrists. So as we're moving forward, here, denial, turning grace into lasciviousness, right? Jude 3. Jude 3. What were we talking about? John, I was reading 1 John. Uh, you want to read Jude 3, Stephen? Yeah. I'm going to read uh, 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So if you're denying the Trinity, you're Antichrist. If, you're de if you set up a workspace religious system that people have to go and say, whatever my pastor says, and I have to go through my pastor, my pastor has become what? The mediator. My pastor has become the middle position. Then you have denied that Jesus is the Christ. That's powerful. Jude. I'm going to read 2 and 3. And mercy, 4. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave you all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith 
which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Denial, denying. So when we're looking at 1 John 2.22, as I mentioned, um, it mentions denying that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, and it says, you know, moving down a little bit at the very end of the verse, it says, that denieth the Father and the Son, and that's a direct reference to John 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. That's what Jesus was saying. And that's what Jesus was condemning the Pharisees, saying, look, man, I'm not here speaking my word or my doctrine. I'm speaking what my Father says. So if you have a problem with me, you have a problem with my Father, you have a problem with the Old Testament, you have a problem with the God of the Old Testament, yeah, that's what he's saying. So as we move forward, understand that denieth. The denieth means substitution of Christ as the Messiah. That's what it means from a New Testament. Remember, the Bible has a built-in dictionary. Let's look at this. Deny. How is the word deny used in the New Testament? All right. This is exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention. All right. Jude 3, verse 4. Uh, Stephen just read. It says, turning grace... Turning the free gift into what? Lasciviousness, which is lewd and lustful, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what the papacy has done. They're saying, no, 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 no. Grace, his toning blood is not enough. That's why you have to attend Mass. It's the bloodless sacrifice of Jesus each and every day. Well, no, that's why you have to be a member of good standing in. That's why you have to do indulgences and prayers for the dead. And that's why you got to do all this workspace stuff because it's, that's called the sacramental system. It's an, and that's why you have to do infant baptism because that's why you have to have last rites, the anointing of the sick, all these things. That's, that's what's all about the workspace religious system. Folks, if you learn from the mother... The daughters are really easy to spot, man. The, da the whore has many daughters. Understand this. The whore of Babylon, a city that sits on seven hills. All right. <clears throat> Deny. Here denial of God and of Christ is not infidel unbelief. Otherwise, these deniers could not have what? Crept in the church unawares. What does crept mean? Crept means stealth. Past particle Sneak. of creep. Yeah, you'd be like creeping in like a ninja, right? Type of thing. Or special forces when they're being dropped and they're coming in secretly. They're creeping in unawares. What does unawares mean? It means you're not aware of their presence. So antichrist, it means that you're not aware of their presence. Now, if you have somebody that openly rejects Jesus Christ... You'd be pretty aware, I imagine. All right, so we see this meaning a subtle corruption of the faith by false doctrines which lead to lust instead of purity. That's what you have. It leads to what? Turning grace into lasciviousness, lewd and lustful, and denying the only Lord, only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So false doctrines, doctrines of devils. Doesn't the Bible revolt, uh, um, warn us about doctrines of devils? 2 Peter 2, 1 through 2. How about 2 Peter 2, 1 through 2? 2 Peter 2. two. But, the, but they were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. All right. So we see that false prophets, they claim to be representatives of God, and they, they have false teachers. They privately, privately means secretly, they bring in what? damnable heresies. Mm -hmm. That's doctrines of devils. That's philosophy. That's Satanism. They bring it in secretly, which denies the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. And so these are pernicious ways. These are evil ways. Pernicious is evil ways. They're against 
the God, they're against the Lord Jesus Christ. They're against the mediator, the only mediator. And you notice the last part of that says, and whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And yes. they're going to speak evil of the truth. Right, exactly. Thank you, Stephen. So that means that those who proclaim a standard, proclaim in the belief and in the inspiration and preserved word of God, which is Jesus Christ, unlocked through faith. What are we? We're evil spoken of. We're persecuted. We're hated, right? Because we stand on the bedrock of Christ. All right. So false teachers among you who bring in damnable or damnation, destruction, die, pernition, per, uh, perdition, pernicious ways, heresies, which means a disunion, sect, even denying the Lord that bought them, many shall fall with their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, like Stephen was talking about. Those who speak the truth shall be attacked verbally. Attacked verbally or speaking the truth. Here again, the denial of the Lord is by false teachers, what? Among the Christian church. Secretly in bringing in false doctrine. What does that mean? That you have wolves and sheep's clothing in the midst of the Christian church. Right. Not Muslims in the Christian church, not atheists in the Christian church, but false teachers and false prophets. Titus 1, verse 16. How about Titus 1, verse 16? Titus 1, verse 16. They profess that they know God. But in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Wow. They profess. They say, oh, yeah, yeah, we believe in God. Oh, yeah, we believe yeah. in Jesus. Because that's what happens when you're dealing with workspace religious system. Oh, oh, I believe in the atoning blood of Je Jesus Christ. Absolutely, we believe that. And then, then they'll speak out of both sides of their mouth. But they're like, well, if you don't do this and this and this, I question your salvation. Well, he just said, oh, no, we believe in salvation. It's free gift. It's a reprobate man. It's a double-minded man. Profess that they know God, but in works. Notice what they do in works. Do they have seven sacraments? Do they ever say, if you don't do this, this, and this, I question your salvation, or God, this might take time off your life. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. That is antichrist. That's not of God. That's of Satan. They deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every good work. Reprobate. That is a reprobate mind. That is an ungodly mind. That is a mind deceived or dimmed or darkened by Satan. Strong language. So we see that Titus 1 verse 16, denying him being abominable, rejected, worthless, cast away, unapproved by God. All right, therefore we should expect Antichrist to be the representative of a professedly Christian religion which did not deny the existence of the Father and Son but betrayed them by unscriptural doctrine. Let us test this in John's detailed description of how Antichrist would deny the Father and the Son. <clears throat> what about 1 John 2, verse 22? Getting back to the basics, folks. 1 John 2, 22. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Amen. So we see the papacy claimed that the Old Testament prophecies concerning the coming of Israel's messianic prophet, priest, and king were fulfilled in the popes and thus deny Jesus' place as the only Christ or Messiah. Uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but Amen. try the spirits where they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. 
We, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Amen. So we see here that um, John was um, very concerned that the false prophet uh, was concerned that his flock might not know the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of Antichrist. A lot of Christians don't today. And that's why, that's why a lot of Christians, they are anemic. They're malnourished. That's why God says in the Laodicean church, there's a famine, not of bread and water, but of the word of God, a famine. Because when you're reading these New Age Bibles, you're not being fed spiritually, ladies and gentlemen. You're not being fed spiritually. So we see that um, the spirit of Antichrist would deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. That is, he would turn aside and render ineffective the ministry of Christ at Calvary. That's why they want to remove the blood of Christ. We want to remove certain verses about believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Acts 8, 37. By the substitution of the sacrifice of the Mass, by penances and indulgences, etc., the papacy sidetracked the message of the cross that Christ paid the all-sufficient price to atone for sins, and that faith alone is sufficient to ensure forgiveness. Thus, the papacy denied the whole purpose of Christ's first advent in the flesh. That is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen, because if you deny, if you say there's any other way than grace, what have you done? You have denied Jesus Christ, because it says in Romans 3, 28, therefore we conclude, that means conclusion, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Correct. This is fascinating. Do we make then void the law through faith? God forbid. We establish the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Well, according to Judeo-Christianity, that's what they believe. Is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles only? Seeing it is one God which justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Faith is the starting point, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's going to get yourself in written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But we see here the deceiver. 2 John 6 and 7. 2 John 6 and 7. After this is love... After we walk after his command, and this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Amen. A deceiver, a deceiver. What does a deceiver mean? Deceiver and it equals antichrist, right? Deceive, deception. Deceiver, ensnare, to be false, to fail, to fulfill, cheat, to cause, to believe untruth, to practice deceit, deception, trick, not honest, deceptive, misleading, cheat, a crafty procedure or practice meant to deceive or defraud. Ruse, stratagem, maneuver, artifice, while faint, indirect means to gain an end. False prophet, right? False. Intentionally untrue. Intentionally untrue. Yea, hath God said, you shall not surely die. Intentionally untrue. Adjusted or made so as to deceive, tending to mislead. Not true. Treacherous, not faithful or loyal. Lie falsehood, untrue statement, something contrary to truth, absence of truth or accuracy, falsity, the practice of lying, mendacity, lie given to deception or falsehood, lying, dishonest. Yes, that's what God is talking about, these antichrists. Now, this all ties in together, learning about Antichrist, man of sin, son of perdition, those claiming to say Jesus, 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 but aren't. There are false prophets, false teachers, right? Isn't that recorded in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15? Gives you an insight on how Satan operates, right? Now, 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming, them, they're transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little. All right, so we see that what is Satan disguises himself as the light, the light is Jesus Christ, right? The light is Jesus Christ. And then he has ministers. He has his followers, his satanic priesthood. That's what he has. He has Madame Blavatsky can speak four languages or whatever. She's there to help bring the Kabbalah. She's all there about the Star of Moloch. That's her God. Star of Moloch, Star of Kiyun, Star of Remfam. And then, and that's also on the Israelite flag. And then you have a majority of the Judeo-Christian movement that wants to side with Luke. Lucifer and Jesus Christ, and that's why God says you're lukewarm. Because, and then, in addition, we're not preaching from the Word of God, we're preaching counterfeit Bibles, which is making Christians anemic, and they're not able to rightly divide the Word of Truth. They're not able to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ because they're tossed to by every wind and doctrine. They're confused by the philosophy of man and wisdom grafted in to the Word of God. All right. Does this mean a counterfeit? Yes. To imitate or copy, especially with the intent to deceive, pretend, feign, false appearance, sham to make an imitation of something else with intent to deceive, forge to make or intimate falsely, especially with intent to defraud, counterfeit. This is Antichrist, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody that says they're a follower of Jesus Christ, somebody that says that they're Christian, but aren't, they're following Satan, whether they realize it or not. The papacy claimed that for that the thousand years of papal dominion in the Middle Ages constituted the messianic millennial reign of Christ, and that each pope was king of kings. Yep. And the Church of Rome was the New Jerusalem. This is historical fact, ladies and gentlemen. The papacy claimed that Christ returned as king to fulfill the royal Davidic prophecies of Christ's reign in and through the dynasty of the Pope. In this manner, the papacy denied that Jesus is coming again in the flesh to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The word deny in English means to deprive of or to rob. Isn't that what it is? When you preach any other gospel, you say workspace, you've robbed and stole from the Lord Jesus Christ. You've climbed the wall a different way. You're a thief and a liar is what the Bible says. Rob. If I deny food to a person by myself eating that food, that illustrates how Antichrist would deny the Father and the Son by depriving them of their divine prerogatives by himself assuming them. The papacy denied the Messiahship of Jesus by himself assuming to fulfill the Messiahship. The papacy denied the redemption wrought by Christ at his first coming or advent by himself offering the false sacrifice of the Mass and by establishing other supposed mediators to God. The papacy denied the coming again of Christ as king by himself claiming to fulfill Christ's kingship. Thus the papacy denied the Father and the Son in exact manner and details as John foretold. And therefore the papacy was the foretold Antichrist. Right? Isn't this exciting? So now you have, you get into the, this is, this is the foundation, you're learning about the foundation of the Reformation producing the seventh purification of the Word of God. Now, if you don't believe that, ladies and gentlemen, then you just say all those people, the 40 to 50 to 80 million people, men, women, and children that were slaughtered because they believed Jesus Christ was the only mediator, what does the Laodicean church say today? Who cares, right? Because all that stuff is going to be happening in the future. Yes! Back to the future. I don't know. Sound good. But to the future, right? Got to get back to the Jesuit. Back to the futurism, right? Back to Ribera. Back to the Jesuit. Jesuitical doctrine. And the reason why you have the futurists is from the Jesuits to take the heat off of Rome. The Pope, 
That's the whole purpose behind it. And then it was infused secretly into, you know, into Christianity today, and that's why we accept it freely. All right. Today, many believe that the falling away and the appearance of Antichrist have not yet taken a place. This is known as the futurist interpretation of prophecy as distinct from the historical view that all has been fulfilled in the papacy of past history. This is his story. We're still going on. Every generation can choose whether they want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ or serve the God of this world. They can choose to be hot for Christ or lukewarm, right? And all we're doing is standing as a generation saying, hey man, understand the history. Understand that this system that was in at the time of John the Baptist, at the time of Paul, is still going on today. It's just amping up. It's still going on today. All right, so we see Jesuit Ribera in 1585, part of the Counter-Reformation, right? Acts 3, 19 to 21, right? Talking about the restitution, a restitution of something to its rightful owner, right? Isn't this exciting, talking all about this, right? Everything's going to be all restored, right? Isn't that exciting? But you know what 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 says? There's a great falling away, ladies and gentlemen, by the Antichrist. A great falling away. A great falling away has happened, is continually happening, because there's a famine of God's Word. A famine of His Word. Right. Because you know why? We're in a layer to see in time because we've rejected the words of Jesus Christ. And Luke 19 verse 14 says, We will not have this man to reign over us. We will not have a final authority. And that's why today is like in the days of Judges. Every man does what's right in their own eyes. But we're saying there is a final authority. It is Jesus Christ. It is the preserved word of God. Come to it. God bless you. Bye.